Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Creators to Creators Today. Today, we have a special guest. Adam Levine. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing, Miosha? Thank you so much for having me on. I, re- I really appreciate it. Of course. I'm super excited. I'm great. I'm great today. Thank you for asking. Very right. excited to talk to you. And, you know, I, I love actually going back to the beginning. I always say, like, the beginning is like where everything kind of happens and starts. Um, like our little habits that we pick up when we're kids kind of, you know, come with us when we're we're adults. They kind of are part of the story and the journey. So tell me a little bit about your childhood, like where you're from and kind of how did you find your way into doing the things that you're doing now? Great question. I'm, I'm not surprised at all. Um, <laughs> so I, um, let's see. I was born in LA, but um, I grew up on the East Coast and um, highly dysfunctional family, like dysfunctional Jewish neurotic family, Um, especially my mother. Yeah, but but it was just a toxic place. And so I early on was not a happy camper. I felt very lonely and isolated, um, super low self-esteem, um, kind of hated myself. And when I was 13 years old, my mom took me on this really exciting vacation to uh, London. <clears throat> and we were just walking, doing tour stuff. I think it might've been at the, the Tower of London. And I saw some guy handing out pamphlets. And he was handing out pamphlets for like all kinds of tours. And there was one tour that really caught my eye and it was Jack the Ripper, Whitechapel walking tour. And I was like, Jack the Ripper. I was like, what's Jack the Ripper? (laughs) It's a really, it's a really interesting sounding name. So I, I kind of just made my mom take me on that tour and she did um, to her credit or to her detriment because it just started this huge obsession that started out with ju- just just Jack the Ripper and his five you know canonical victims and who was Jack the Ripper and reading Jack the Ripper books, but I didn't in my short life I'd never really gotten very excited about much. Um, I was at that time I was closeted, like I wasn't even sure like what I was, but I I think I really connected with show tunes and musicals and in a, in a way it was because it was my escape so this was maybe the first thing that wasn't that um that was out in the world and that just spiraled into reading about learning about other serial killers and mm-hmm. I became a serial killer fanatic now the caveat to this story Miyoshi, is that um I'm pretty old relative to your viewers for sure and definitely relative to you and so when i was 13 14 years old in the 90s it was not really looked upon favorably to have an interest in serial killers or Mm -hmm. to want to have discussions about jack the ripper it was kind of like where did where did your parents go wrong and there's definitely obviously some truth to that but today it's like, oh, that's great. You know, like, have you checked out this website? You've got to follow yeah. this Instagram account. I love, you know, I love talking about Dahmer. Did you see the Netflix series? Like, none of that was acceptable. Like, it definitely started more concerned about me and my family. But it, um, I kind of reveled in that. And then um, I grew up and we moved back to L.A. when I was nine. And I saw on the West Side, I noticed that there were some peculiar looking um, hearses that were driving around like Beverly Hills and West Hollywood and going very slowly down the streets. And on the side of the hearse, it said Graveline Tours. 
And I, again, it was just like my Jack the Ripper moment. I was like, I, I have to do that. I have to go inside of that verse and, and do a great blend where I don't know what it is. <laughs> and um, so birthday parties, like I brought a few friends um, and we took a Graveline tour and it was basically, it was this hearse. So inside the hearse where you normally store the coffin, what they had done was that they had taken out the bed and they had put in seats, like custom made benches. And it was a guided tour of celebrities homes, but where the celebrities um, were killed or committed suicide or um, mysteriously disappeared, had sex scandals, everything that makes people uncomfortable. And you, you were in this vehicle that used to drive around um, bodies. And I, I just thought it was, the, it was just God's greatest gift. I, it was also <laughs> for me, it was total escape. Escape from reality because the idea of being in this hearse Mm. was so transformative because you're inside this funeral vehicle and all you can think about is like okay so wow like a body was in here and then at the same time you're being told all these stories that you didn't know this is what happened in Janis Joplin yeah. and for the first time hearing it it's very exciting it's very like I never knew that right about <laughs> I don't know, back then it would have been like, I never knew that about um, Janis Joplin's an example. John Belushi was on the tour, um, but it was a while ago. It was like before River Phoenix. It was before a lot of the things that we have on the tour today. So mm -hmm. long story short, um, it was my happy place. And <laughs> I retained that interest for better or worse in the macabre and kind of harbored it. And it was always like a side thing. And whenever I was like bored with friends or just at a loss for conversation at a lunch with someone to be like, so what's your favorite serial killer? <laughs> and I kind of liked it for the shock element too, because nobody was ever expecting me to say that. <laughs> right, and right, right. So I had like the rest of my life was like not normal, but it was like not, it wasn't disturbing and dark and twisted. Um, and I always followed Graveline Tours. They closed and it was replaced by, um, I think one of the drivers for the Graveline Tour company started up what was called Dearly Departed Tours. And it was like mm -hmm. the second version of it. I was very disappointed at the time because I saw it and it was a van. It was just a white van and it wasn't like a serial killer van. It was just a van. Just a van. And it said <laughs> Graveline Tours. And I was like, what? Like, I don't want to go in a van, you know, I was, <laughs> it was just such a brat, you know, but so <laughs> I, I, but I went on grave, uh, sorry, it was, uh, they changed the name to dearly departed tours. And oh. so I, <clears throat> and so I went on a dearly departed, I would like take my friends anyway. And I started, um, my main job when I, um, after school was I started to do home renovation, um, mm. in LA um a passion it was it, it was a really um good match for my skill set and nice. then I found out right around COVID um I just googled something about Dearly Departed I wanted to check something I think somebody was asking me about one that they run and, and there was this sign on the website that was like sorry we we couldn't make it we hmm. we tried and we thank you for a great 16 years and um, we're closing our doors. And mm. I was just, I was so crestfallen and I walked into the other room and it was just like, it wasn't even like from me. It was just like, I just had this moment of thought where I said to myself, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to bring back the hearses because LA cannot not have a macabre dark tourism tour and yeah. I thought about it some more and I was like yeah this is perfect I mean I've loved it my whole life like I have now some business experience and at the time things were getting tougher in construction I mean they mm -hmm. were never easy it was never walking the park but it, it was beginning to become very difficult with city regulations I mean even more difficult and um, also because of the macroeconomic conditions just inflation mm -hmm. started to hit Of all of Hollywood's history hotels, the one 
with the most reported paranormal activity. Graveline Tours offers a delightful, macabre assortment of general and premium rides to notorious homes and locations for the newly curious and true crime experts alike. Each ride is given in one of our custom six-door funeral Cadillac Fleetwood limousines. Tours are immersive and include audio and visual content to enhance the post-mortem experience. Book your tour today, Graveline Tours. House prices weren't rising quickly anymore, and I was slowing down, and I was kind of starting to think, like, when is it safe to keep doing this, and when should I just stop before I get hurt? Mm -hmm. um, so I started it as just as a side hustle the graveland thing and i didn't think that it was gonna take uh, um a very long time um i thought that it was going to be like you know you just gotta get the limos oh and then sorry annotation to that story which is mio said that um i told everybody what i was doing and a couple people had mm, sort of negative responses to the idea of going inside a hearse oh really um I, I was like, what's wrong with you? But they were like, I, I'm interested in the tour, but I will never, ever drive in a hearse. Hmm. So I thought about that. And um, and I was I made a really good connection with somebody who is basically the unofficial funeral, lim the funeral vehicle king of Southern California, who's obsessed with cars and obsessed with death. And he's a mortician. <laughs> And he was oh, coaching wow. me. He was like, he was like, this is the kind of hearse you want. This is what you need to do to it. This is the year. This is the model because it has this engine and it is like just so helpful. And I said to him, I said, you know, Ronnie, I said, this happened, you know, this happened. He said, oh. he said, get limousines. Oh. And I really struggled with the idea because I was so wedded to the hearse, mm -hmm. but it ended up being a lot cheaper because a limousine is cheaper. Um, just MSRV, MSRP value is much lower than a hearse because hearses are expensive i think they have to be custom built and also oh. the limousines don't need any work because they have air conditioner and they have seats and then it turned out okay so a funeral limousine is not the same thing as a regular limousine a funeral limousine is um just a limousine that has only ever driven people to um cemeteries from mortuaries and mm. so the there's still a a distinct tone of death and the limousines that ronnie told me to get specifically these cadillacs 1993 to 1996 fleetwoods are very iconic if you've ever seen the amy winehouse video um, oh yeah back to black mm -hmm. so it, there's like one of those is in the cemetery in the cemetery scene and it's it's like very classical death so yeah. I, I gradually warmed to the idea so anyway so I did I did that and I I just didn't think it was going to be a big deal I foolishly thought the company would run itself I thought it would just take off um and I would have be able to do my my construction and then this on the side yeah couldn't have been more wrong about that I mean it's just like it and I, I don't regret this at all. I love it. I'm so happy and grateful that this is my full-time job, but it's become a full-time job. And coincidentally, um, just things got so difficult with construction that I said, I'm, I'm just going to take a time out. I'm going to focus yeah. on Graveline. Yeah. So, and I brought the name Graveline Tours back. I thought about a lot of other possibilities and I, I never found anything I liked more. And I did a name mm -hmm. check and it, it, was, it wasn't copyrighted or anything. So I thought it would be a nice homage yeah, because Graveline Tours is really the idea that I'm seeking. What I want to do is bring back the idea of the tour being the experience that it's peddling. And so, mm -hmm. um, a you get to do it in the limos, which is I think it, it's it's a really really crucial part of the experience. Um, you see the the similar kinds of stops. We've updated it uh, obviously, but then also we have added. Um, there's some audio clips, um, nice. which I believe they had on the original Graveline tours and they, they had some on Dearly Departed. Um, so like primary source audio, 911 calls, um, you went, so 911 calls. I loved it. And thank you. So that, that means a lot to me. Um, yeah. and, um, like news reports, um, like, but like from the day after that's, you know, in the seventies or whatever. And then, as you know, also we added this 
capability for phones to scan QR codes that correspond to each tour so that mm -hmm. when you get to certain stops, you scroll through. And the idea originally was to be able to look at crime scene photos. Um, but I also had this thought to myself that a lot of these people are not going to all be familiar with all of the people on the stops. Right. Um, right. The older people aren't going to necessarily know Notorious B.I.G. The younger people aren't necessarily <laughs> going to know Lana Turner. So right. I just thought, let's just throw in like background photos to see what they all look like. So mm. the idea was to have like an all encompassing sort of multi-sensory experience. And mm -hmm. um, it's a blast, but that's how I, very, very long story. That's how I ended up here. That's amazing. And I mean, the fact that you, you had the idea and you're like, no, I'm going to bring this back. You went out and did it. I'm curious have you always been a go-getter like ever since you were a child? Like, where does that come from? Well, I really appreciate that compliment back in a compliment. I, I don't think of myself, I guess I never thought of myself as a go-getter, but I, I, I have always done things since I was a young boy um, without a lot of guidance I mean, I've had role models and I, and I have my guardian angels in my life that have helped me, but I've just had to develop a lot of self-reliance from mm -hmm. a young age. And I think that that's actually been a, a great blessing, mm -hmm. but I'm very self-starting because um, I, I think I, it's just been inherent in me that um, life is very short it's very precious and it's what you make of it and yeah. so um and 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 the uh, yeah so basically um i would say yes i i would say I, oh and then the other aspect to that is that i also think that it took me a while to figure this out miosha but i think that like my good job fit is is entrepreneur so Love that. i um i thought it's in the wheelhouse because I have this one company it's LA centric about LA homes rather mm -hmm. than taking them out and putting up these cookie cutter um, spec homes. I really wanted to restore the original architecture because I, I love this city so much. And, and I thought, well, this one is just also very LA centric because actually what I'm doing really is secretly teaching people the history of the city. They just don't oh, yeah. realize it, you know, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it secretly happened to me. I'm not a historian. I'm not a buff, but I now know so much history because so many of the deaths and the events um, pivot on historic events that you have to have known about that are citywide. Yeah. So, um, so thank you. I I don't think of myself as a go getter, but I I do think that uh, um, I'm an entrepreneur. It's a very privileged position to be in. Um, I feel very blessed to be able to do it. And I, um, and I think that it's a responsibility as much as a blessing, you know, mm. it's, it's something that I, I really strive to live up to because all I want is for these tours to take root. And, um, but yeah, I think so. And, and, and I also think that it's sort of second nature to me just because I grew up pretty, um, I, I did a lot of self-raising. Mm. not a ton but a lot of self-raising so it gave mm -hmm. me very very good tools that mm, a lot of my friends today you know I have friends that are like oh you're my only entrepreneur friend and um I mean it's a difficult but, job but you have to love what you do I think you know the only way it's the only I mean in LA it's it's pretty much impossible um Ooh, yeah. what what I realized doing this um and looking back on the construction is that I actually have it so much easier now because mm. the uh, um, building and safety departments and the zoning departments and the city of LA red tape is, is set up so that no new entrants can succeed in the industry. You're, you're allowed to tread water yeah. and you're allowed to just make enough to get to the next project. Maybe mm -hmm. um, you're definitely allowed to take big risk and then lose money. But the way that they have structured these just, I mean, you just ever listen to Adam Carolla talk about building regulations in California. And that's what it is. It, uh, when I started an adult friend of mine said, you know, 
they're what they're trying to do is to keep you from working. And I just thought that's yeah. so preposterous. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're, they're just doing their job and making money for the city. And mm-hmm. then now that I do this, um, I realized that um, for 10, 12 years, I was doing a job where it is impossible to have wild success because the people that have had wild success have become lobbyists for the local politicians who have used the regulations to make sure that nobody can come back in, can come into the game. And so I actually feel sort of like secretly very lucky because Mm -hmm. I don't think there's that ceiling um, on sightseeing tours. That's not to say it's not an extremely difficult and very, very um, intimidating business it is. But I think that there is upward potential in a way that there there's not for building development. Right. Yeah. I, I wonder, um, you know, because it's amazing that you have this it, this this going and, and it's it's great. It's I mean, I, I have a friend when I, I told I told him I did it and he was like, oh, I love I love it. He's in Canada. He was just saying how, you know, he loves it. And he's such a fan. He wants to come and visit. He hears all about it. And I'm like, wow, it's amazing to know that, like, you know, your work, you know, travels so far and vast, like a lot of people know about it. So that's a testament to you and just, you know, your skills wow. and just the power that you have. It's just amazing. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, you're touching lives, you know, and changing like, you know, that you never like you don't like, you know, it's like you don't know the people that you that know about what you're doing and the vision yeah. that you have. It's just amazing. It's the best part of the job. It's by far the most rewarding part of the job. A good review I'll take any time over great profits. One good review makes me, it just makes my heart swell. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, were there any times in your, in the journey that you've questioned like the, like, or maybe we're like, maybe I'm doing, am am I not, I'm not doing something right. Or have you ever had those questions in like a constantly mm. oh constantly i think it's the only way that i've had any re- remote success is that i'm the most self-critical person i know i, I really oh. am and I, I definitely got that from probably my grandparents um reinforced by my parents for sure but um build, starting a business as you know is it's so spiritually and emotionally daunting because at the beginning there's nobody that believes in you except for you that's and it. you have to prove it to everybody. And even sometimes the, the people that you prove it to um, won't give you the affirmation that, that you want. Um, That's true. With the first time around with the home restoration business, I would say it was harder just because A, it was my first business and B, you really do have to have um, a stomach of steel mm. to... Keep going after you take a beating. And that's basically life in general. But there were a number of times when for faults that were either my own or they were not my own, I I, uh, would take a loss on a house. I never lost my shirt, but I took a loss. And I just thought to myself, you're such an idiot. You know, what are you doing? This is such like such a dumb idea. Like, how do you know that this isn't going to happen to you every other time? Um, with Graveline, it was, there was less internal Mm -hmm. questioning just because a, I really had a huge amount of faith in the concept because I knew that it had worked before. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I knew that there was the, the latent demand for it. Um, the thing that was hard for me was the first six to nine months, um, and I've been so blessed. The only reason that I have any success and any traction is because of my team. I, I I would love to take credit. I cannot take credit. I have the best driver on the planet. As you know, I have oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the best marketing guy on the planet who is who genuinely cares in LA marketing, someone who cares about you and wants yes. your business to succeed and like refuses to raise their retainer until, you know, maybe ever. Uh, because they want me to be profitable and tells me to buy less advertising. Um, And I have the greatest social media person in the world um, who I've become great friends with. So because of those three, I'm anywhere, but um, being originally like my interest is in fine art um, painting. And so 
I had no clue about marketing. And that was my biggest oversight when I started the company is I didn't think I had to do any marketing. I just thought it was just going to take off on its own. <laughs> yeah, it's just... <laughs> so stupid. So naive. So naive. I mean, it's just like, I think, go back and I'm like, how do you even, how do you even like <laughs> fathom something like that? Even successful companies are marketing nonstop, but non-stop. I didn't know, like, I didn't know. And I think I sort of spent my whole life kind of avoiding marketing because <laughs> I'm just such like an artistic snob in like right. some respects. And <laughs> So um, basically, the first six to nine months, even though we were doing as well as we possibly could have, you have you're, you're taking losses. You you have many days where you don't have bookings, and wow. but you have to keep the doors open, and you have to pay the drivers. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to keep them, um, I I've had drivers leave because they just either felt bad or they weren't getting enough work, um, and. I did always see the upward tick, but there were for sure months where it was like the whole month we would like do like nothing. And that was the hardest part. Um, There was one time where the marketing guy kind of came to me and he was like, I just had a meeting with our team. And basically they're just like, what, what are you doing? You know, what's going on? Like, Mm -hmm. um, this company has to be doing better by now. Um, and even though the people that had given that response weren't really necessarily qualified to be giving that kind of analysis and the marketing guy that I worked with was like telling me that Mm -hmm. it's so scary to hear that from an external, not yourself, you know, but, um, I did know from, from, from construction that basically I would just, I just had to keep going and I gave myself a timeline um, and I'm still on a timeline, but um, I am now at the place, thank God, where unless there's some catastrophe or like I do something really stupid or somebody dies, like we're we're going to be OK. We're going to be and we have plans like big plans for the future, upcoming tours. We have merch. We're thinking about it's exciting. Franchising. And none of this is like. None of it is like we're at the point of, but yeah. I, as, as the owner, like my job is to always kind of like be one step ahead yeah. and I feel safe now to say that we are going to get to all those places. Awesome. I love so, that. It's that's, a great question. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, I, I, you know, cause this is music to my ears, you know, and I just, cause I've, I've been there when, you know, you, you step out and you you create projects and uh, under your production company and you just go out and it's, it's like, it's taking that faith. But when you believe in something, I really believe that you, when you step out on faith, everything eventually just lines is aligns itself to you. I do believe in manifestation for sure. And faith is, faith is everything. Um, I came to that recently, but um, I don't even think that the idea was mine. I just think that I was just told to do it. And so, yeah. I, you know, oh, I, love I just thought, all right, well, I'll do it because it, it, it feels so natural and organic. And, yeah. you know, I, I never thought of my person who myself as a person who defines himself by by dark interests and passions, because like there are people and they come on our tours and no shade at all. Like I really super like love talking to them and have great respect. But like I'm not a person that's like Mr. Charles Manson or. Yeah, Mr. Goff. Sure. I would love to talk about all those things, but I, sure. I've always thought that um, my 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 the way I define myself is not necessarily by macabre history, but mm-hmm. I think that being that it's about LA for me almost more than it is about the content of the tour um, really makes makes it that much more important to me than if it was just a dark tourism tour. I, I, I'm just very, very in, enraptured with the city and I have my whole life and to the degree where it's it's like part of who I am, LA, you know? And yeah. I, I yeah. wanna do everything that I can. I mean, it's, it's no secret that we're having very difficult few years and yeah. I, won't, I, I don't wanna leave, I, I wanna fight. So this is kind of my way of, in my small part, trying to make people um, lo- like the city and have things to do, but also like come to know the city 
when it was the city that I grew up in that I fell in love with, um, yeah. which had so much color, yeah. you know, and so much stories and buzz. And it really was a really magical place. And I think it still is at some times, but few and far between. Definitely. I love this. I love this really quick question before we end. It's like 30 minutes goes by so fast. Um, so fast. <laughs> The three levels of influence, money, power, and respect. And if you could choose only one of those things, which one would you choose and why? Respect. Because um, uh, I think that in this life, what matters the most is how you treat other people and the um, impact that we as individuals have on the lives of people around us, especially the people that are less strong or less fortunate or, or less privileged. This is a very Jewish belief, but um, I, it's also like I got it from my grandparents. I would, I would not trade um, being, being somebody that was, that people spoke well of mm -hmm. um, for anything. And money is nice and power is nice sometimes, but they're both very dangerous. Um, and I've watched them destroy a lot of people um, that have been more privileged than I have in ways to um, acquire them. And um, <clears throat> I sort of feel like it's, it's really lucky that I wasn't uber successful early on in my life because I definitely started out looking for money and power. Um, yeah. and yeah. it took me a long journey. A lot of it was in the construction, a lot of soul searching to get to the place where I realized that actually I, I, the only one that I is a deal breaker for me in this life is, 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 is respect and reputation. And I would say, um, compassion, like compassion for other people. Cause it, it, especially today, like, and you got, you and I have talked about this offline, like just the world is such a hard place to live and i think people a lot more people than you and i even know um could use some lifting up in any way that's right that's right i love that oh what a great answer wow uh i i could talk to you all day this is uh so great um where can people follow your page and oh yeah Thank you. The marketing questions um, at, <laughs> at Graveline Tours on Instagram and on TikTok, we're at Graveline Tours RIP. And um, our website is graveline.rip. And you can go there for information about our tours and to buy tickets. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much thank for you. coming on. I no, have thank you so much for having me on. Um, yes. I, it, it's a blast. And um, I'm, I'm really happy to know you so oh, um, same. next time you're in LA because I, I, I would love to have lunch and I get promise. you on another tour yes for sure for sure and thank you all for listening and always remember to live love laugh we'll see you guys next time bye-bye